Big Z Reviews. Roadhouse is a new action film that's kind of inspired by the old movie from the same name. Essentially that there is um, there is a roadhouse that a bouncer uh, bounces at, and that's the movie. And it's... The action is some of the worst action I've ever seen in a movie, and I hated it. I know who you are. Elwood Dalton, big fan, man. That guy's got a knife under his shirt. You just take a big step back and pop me in the face. You can do it. Tell me about this bouncer. Yeah, it's all nice, like he's Mr. Rogers or something, but then he'll haul off. So this was directed by Doug Lyman, and it was kind of interesting. Like, he came out, like, he was really pissed that uh, Amazon wasn't putting this movie in theaters at all. And that it was just going straight to streaming. And it's kind of interesting, like, that, I guess, it, it, when Amazon buys your film, you have to prepare to, for never to see theaters. But at the same time, I think Doug Lyman thinks this movie is much better than it actually is. But uh, this movie, the main star is uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. And they have uh, Daniel Melchior, Con- Connor McGregor, in his debut performance. And, oh, it's definitely a performance. And they also have uh, Billy uh, Magnuson as the, uh, the evil guy that's trying to buy up the town. Like all those old uh, skiing movies. He's the rich man is buying up the hill. We have to race him for the, for, to win the hill back from him. You know, this is definitely feels like an 80s film, but it has the oddest action scenes I've ever seen in a film. And it, it just doesn't work. And I've seen, like, in interviews and stuff about, like, how they did it. And it's so much work to look like shit. Like, I don't get it. I don't get, like, when they were putting it together and that they... it. it like, when, at some point, they must have realized that this looks bad. But they had to keep doing it because that's, like, Doug Lyman had this big idea to change the way action is filmed. But it just, it just doesn't work. It looks like a video game. It, like, it looks like a, a, a video game cutscene. And not in a good way. Like, it's two human beings doing a fight scene. And it looks like they're not in, even in the same room as each other. Like, I've, I've never seen anything like it. And, I, and what it is, is that essentially each, each fight scene is filmed four times. So you essentially you have one time when there's a character punching a green pillow. One time when a green pillow is punching the other person. And then one time when they film it like you would normally film it. With by digging the angle and having you not actually punch the guy. And then one more time in slow-mo. And then they merge them all together into this abomination of an action scene. And so we came up with a whole new technique, which is an A, B, C, D pass, which is like four shots blended together. First, I have the person throw the punch. The second pass, I have the person have a big red pad in their hand in the same timing, hit as hard as they can. The third pass, the hand hitting the pad for real. And then the final pass is just a blank background pass with nothing in the foreground so you can blend all those shots together. And it's like, yeah, funny, I, I rewatched The Raid. They, they came out in 4K recently. And it is such a good film. Although it's really too bad they didn't also do The Raid 2 Raid Redemption or whatever it is at the same time. I think he's probably working on it. But, um, like, that's how you do an action film. And it's probably a lot cheaper than this. I can't imagine, like, how much money had to go into these action scenes for them to look so bad. Like, it's really, it's mind-boggling that what they did here. Because, like, like I, I don't know. It's something about it. Like, I, the whole time, like, if you told me that they were nev- the people fighting each other were never in the same room, I believe you. Like, it feels like, especially some scenes, like, they're in a bar, and they're fighting each other, and they're interacting with a piano. And one time, like, when they're fighting in front of the piano, the piano doesn't look real. It looks like part of a green screen. 
and then they they smash a person's head into the keys then like it changes how it looks and then now it's a like a real piano and like everything is like that the entire thing the is every scene is so confusing like it it it's it's not like something about it like is wrong in your eyes and two there's even more like they cut out like clips of it to make it look faster and that's like an old kung fu film trick that to make it look make the punches look faster and not notice that they're not actually hitting each other although it's funny the really good kung fu films a lot of times like donnie yen and jackie chen and and uh jet lee they would pay off the stunt creator, the stunt performers, to actually let them hit them. They'd like, they 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 they'd toss them some bucks to let them take a big hit from them instead of instead of faking it to make it look better. And but this stuff, it's just, it, I don't know. I, I I hope no one ever uses this this technique again. But you know, f before the actual film, you know, it's fine. It's a generic '80s thing. Where like except, except that they really forced in the UFC, where Jake Gyllenhaal murdered his best friend he was he was fighting, and that's the one thing. Now the backstory is so weird, like they never explained. Like at one point he's just like, "That's why they shouldn't have made me angry." And then he starts like killing people, like in the film when they when they do bad things. Like before he's just been knocking them out and be really nice to it, and I kind of like that aspect, but like. They never tackled, like, they, you say that he went to a fit of rage, but, like, what he did, essentially, like, the you know, UFC, you know, the ref is in charge of kind of getting you off him and ending the match. But, like, they made it clear that he got him off him and then he, he, like, fought the ref and went back and then killed the other guy. Like, and while he was completely already knocked out, like, he murdered him. And, like, I... You know, it's tough because if it happens during a fight, obviously, you know, it wouldn't be manslaughter at all. But it, if what they showed, I think he'd be in jail. Like, I think he'd just be in jail for murder. Like, like, and it's so weird they never explain, like, did they have bad blood? Like, they, they, the fight they showed, there's nothing dirty about it. He was just having a fight and he was maybe, like, losing it a little bit. And then something switched turned on him and he went crazy and won the fight and then murdered his friend. Like, that aspect was so odd. But the actual, like, the actual film is fine. Like, they have, um, they have Jessica Williams. Like, she's the owner of this, of Roadhouse, which is called Roadhouse, whatever. And, like, they, like, uh, recruits him because they're having trouble with these bikers destroying her bar. And they come in and there's this whole thing that Billy Mag Magnuson... His dad is in jail, but, like, owns this town. And they're trying to buy up everything and build a resort. And it's like, they're in the Florida Keys. Um, are you keeping an eye on uh, the uh, the uh, global climate shifting? The, uh, the hurricanes? The fact that America is probably going to lose this dick in a couple decades? And the fact that if you live in Florida... You literally can't get home insurance because they know Florida is going to be underwater and one more hurricane is going to completely wipe it out. And the, the keys especially are not long for this world, probably. Like, you wouldn't be buying everything out to build a brand new resort in the Florida Keys right now. But whatever. And the, the thing is, when... They hire Conor McGregor, and when Conor McGregor comes in, oh boy, he is, he is doing something, something special for this film. The whole time, he's like, just walking around like this. And the whole time, he has that big lat syndrome. It's so weird. And there's multiple scenes, like, where he's naked, like, sometimes he's, like, uh, Winnie the Pooh in it, and other times, like, he's fully naked, but you see him from behind. And he's walking, he's doing this swagger walk, where his legs are so wide, and you're getting, like, you're in, the, the camera is, like, behind him and a little bit low. And so he's walking like he has uh, 20 pound balls, and he has to put his schlong in a wheelbarrow to get around. 
But then, like, there's... He's like a, a Ken doll. Like, there's, n- like, no trace of anatomy, even though his legs are so wide and he's walking. And there, if there's anything, there should be a little bit of something there, but there's nothing. You know, he's obviously wearing, like, a modesty belt, like John Cena at the Oscars. But it's like... And his character is just... He's, like, smiling the whole time, and he's, like, a badass, but he's... It's, it's a lot. Like, it's, it's just a lot. And that's all I have to say about that. Hey, fellas. Looks like you're having a smirking night. And Daniela uh, Melchior, she is, like, the romantic interest. And she's, like, a doctor. Well, like, she looks even more like a nurse. And she, I don't know. I, I liked her as the rat catcher, too. But, like, she needs to work on her accent. It's tough to understand anything she's saying. And I was like, oh, boy, like, this is a weird casting. She says she was born here. Like, she lives here and left and came back. But how come she has an accent like no one else in the movie? But then they introduce her father, the sheriff, Joaquin de Almeida. And, like, they have slightly similar accents. Like, again, like, no one else in the film. I'm like, okay, I guess she got her, the accent from the dad. Okay, that makes sense. But, like I said, the actual film is fine. I think the the action is just such an abomination that it's just, it made it tough to watch and maybe, like, not enjoy it. Like, it, it, you know, it's a fine streaming film. Like, if if you have something to throw on... I don't know when I pay attention to, like, it's not horrible, but, like, I'm so offended by the action that I have to give it, like, a 2 out of 10. Like, it's the weirdest, worst action I've ever seen in a film. And I I love action movies. I've seen them all, you know? I've seen, and I love USC. Like, I haven't I keep kept up to it lately. It's kind of like my brother got me into AEW wrestling, so, like, I, and I had a, my fill of violence, like, from that, I didn't need to see UFC. I kind of fell off a bit, especially when they switched to, the, the ESPN Plus and all that stuff. But, like, back in the day, like, I downloaded, like, the, every, I watched every single one. Like, I, I got into a bit later, I more into K1 sports kickboxing I got, I got into when I started watching UFC, and I watched all the way back from the beginning through... So, and this is interesting having, like, UFC so front and center in this movie. It's, like, almost, like, it's, like, it's, like, almost a UFC film. But it's just, I wish the action was better. Like, that just broke the film for me. Like, Roadhouse is just kind of shit. But, uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of me, you can subscribe down below. Thanks. Mm-hmm.